for us to for, uh, really completely rec uh, describe Palm Sunday, you have to be there. As we read through the script, through the gospel lessons, we, we emphasize that the uniqueness of this occasion. But being there perhaps will give us a, a better understanding of what was take, taking place on this day in the life, not only Jesus, but his disciples and the people that gather in Jerusalem in this particular time. So this morning, perhaps we can make a trip, go back and perhaps refresh our, uh, uh, the sense of location and thinking of being there what Jesus is able to see and what exactly is taking place on this important occasion in the life of our Lord. Last weekend, I went to, uh, with part of my family to downtown Des Moines uh, to watch the St. Patrick Day Parade. And uh, uh, if you were, you were there? No. Well, it, it was okay. <laughs> but uh, uh, the facts of being there are uh, making certain observations. You're standing there with, with all kinds of people and, and they are, the children are going crazy because they want all the candies that, it, that people can throw at them. You know, all those details were there and you're just standing there and, and my eyewitness of the things that I saw were quite a bit surprising in many ways. People came to you that they were perhaps half drunk already and they were talking to you like they knew you. And I said, well, you know, that was part of the deal. So I, I was able to really get a sense of the different activities that was taking place around me in this particular parade, the St. Patrick Parade. Now, I want you to go with me to another parade, if you will, that we call Jesus' Triumphal Entry into Jerusalem or Palm Sunday. All the gospel will take the time to define or to put down this particular experience. Uh, the way that they did, it was a unique way. As we read from John, and you can read in Matthew, and you can read in, in, in Luke, and you will see different aspects of this experience be, being put down in black and white so we can see dynamics. See what exactly is going there. And we ask a question, who, who was there? Just go and make this observation, who's there? Well, I can see Lazarus is there. Lazarus, you read back in, in John chapter 11, uh, was raised by Jesus. So Lazarus was part of that. He was walking around and perhaps proclaiming that the Messiah was coming in. Or perhaps testifying that these that's coming in the name of the Lord did something especially in his life and he was called to be there. He must be present. The disciples were there. Jesus' mother was there. All the spectrum of the saints that are being described in the scripture were present. No, also the Pharisees were there. Those who were looking forward to destroy and take and to eliminate not only uh, Lazarus, but really Jesus, they also were there. And if you read carefully in the gospel, they even came to Jesus at one point and they asked Jesus, hey, uh, why are you allowing your disciples and all these people to proclaim that you are the Messiah? Tell them to shut up. Tell them to be quiet. So apparently for the Pharisees, the idea that Jesus was walking in and the people were proclaiming the Hosanna, save us. He comes the king. He, he comes the one who's going to save and, and come in the name of the Lord. He's the one to save us. All the details in regard to the king of Israel, it was a no-no in the life of the Pharisees. So they're reacting to what the people are saying about this Lord that's coming. 
Is that something that I'm doing here? Or? But this, we, we have this spectrum of dynamics that taking place, and this is what we are able to see. The gospel tells us that the people, like they used to in the Old Testament, they wanted to bow to the king that was coming in, but have galloping in this white horse. They, they bow to the king as they enter into the city with certain victory. But here comes the one who is different all around, riding on a donkey. And that particular detail tells me that this Messiah, that this king is a different type of king. And carefully, when you look in the Gospel of Mark, when Jesus was ab about to approach Jerusalem, and we are told that he sent to, to his disciples, you, you in the story, go and you will see, you will find a donkey. And, and if anybody comes to ask you what I do with this animal, tell them that the Lord needs them. Can you imagine? He's the king of kings, sending disciples to borrow a donkey to come in into Jerusalem and proclaim certain victory. That was not the right thing in the life of the whole atmosphere around who the king really was. What exactly is so upsetting that the Pharisees are re a reaction to what is taking place here? They are saying, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The king of Israel. Now, I am somehow confused as I was in my, in my St. Patrick parade. Because in my observation, I see people who are proclaiming that this Messiah that is coming in. And today I understand that the same people who proclaim that Jesus was the Messiah and was the Savior as the one that comes Friday afternoon, they will change their mind. And no longer they want to proclaim that he is the king, but they're going to ask Pilate to kill him, crucify him. Instead of the Hosanna, or blesses the one who comes in the name of the Lord, now comes Friday, and they're going to say the opposite. That's part of what I'm seeing taking place on this Palm Sunday. It seems to me that people like you and me, will change our minds sometimes. Even when we are, we are seeing the manifestation of the presence of God, we do not completely get it because we don't want to get it. We have those dynamics. Jesus, the Messiah, is coming in as he came in into, uh, into our own hearts. What Jesus actually is doing, he is coming in into a place where not only thousands of people are present, but he's looking to the future. He's looking for where to see you and me and that parade. He's looking to see all of us together in the, in the, in the same combination of sa being saved by who he is. He is coming into Jerusalem to save us, to give us a new direction, to mold us according to what he is doing. He is coming in to create a sense of direction. He's coming out to, to create a, a, a sense of wonder and hope and grace, the grace that surpassed my understanding. All those dynamics are taking place in the life of Jesus. And no wonder when he sees the people reacting to what he's doing and, and, and knows very well their hearts, he cried. Oh, Jerusalem. Oh, my people. Because he knew exactly what those people or all of us perhaps will do. And all of this, I feel that even though I, as we say literally, we drop the ball, and still God comes to us in the name of Jesus to redeem us, to redeem us, and give us a new sense of direction, a new sense of order, 
a new sense of seeing who he is. The Messiah. The reaction of the Pharisees becomes to us an example of what we really need to change. For us to really see the complete picture of who Jesus is. We need to humble ourselves. Humble to the point that we can see and taste what the presence of God is all about. Jesus himself understood that. He's not galloping in into Jerusalem uh, doing this in his chest like uh, we see that taking place a lot in the basketball games these days. He's simply accepting that this is what he was called to do. And he is not going to change it now because it's what it is. He is looking for us to have a sense of hope and victory and eternal life. Thanks be to God, now and forever.